Uh, you are muted. Okay, let me share the screen. So, are the slides okay? Can you see them well? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Screen, I don't know if this is still okay. Yeah, we can see it. Okay be full screen good um so now this is the lecture sorry the tutorial so sixth uh, uh, scheduled lecture but this is um the shape of a tutorial since uh, we are uh, online it's gonna be a tutorial uh, that's even if it's um, about exercising and uh, proving uh, some lemmas and propositions and theorems um i'm going to be the one that will uh, talk the most but please feel free to, to interrupt and ask me or uh, add your, your comments, your ideas. So uh, what is the goal is to compute the disguised toric locus for, the, so that's the whole goal for at least what I planned. If there's more time, we can add some other things, but just this to compute, to see again the triangle on a line, the details that are missed, that were missed last time, quadrilateral on a line, to generalize this systematically to the end, to see what we can generalize for the end gone on a line. And uh, uh, then the last example, that one where it was a non weakly reverse reversible reaction that had four arrows that were starting from uh, the corners of a rectangle. And to generalize that, finally, an algorithm just a uh, brief, there are several algorithms in the paper, but we'll just see a simplified version probably. Again, these are the um, references as before, didn't add new ones in the meantime. And uh, before starting with the triangle on a line, I want to motivate why sh should we care about small networks or particular classes in this case and studying them. And uh, in several, this appears in several re references. I read, I was reading in real life applications since the networks are very complicated usually. Uh, sometimes understanding part of the entire uh, network seen as a motif in the network might uh, provide some insight into the dynamics. So even if it's a, if we look, for instance, in the triangle on a line or something like this, it might sometimes, in other cases, uh, give insight on a bigger network, more complicated one in practice. Uh, I didn't prepare now ex concrete examples for this, but there are cases and there are dynamical properties that can be inferred in this way. So it's it's good to look at small networks sometimes. So for instance, uh, triangle on a line, again, I showed the main idea, but <clears throat> maybe now we take it in a more step-by-step -step way. Let me just... So we have the complete directed graph on three vertices and the vertices are in a special position. They are on a line. We call it triangle on a line. <clears throat> and it turns out that this is the disguised toric dynamical system. Well, in uh, the previous tutorial, we computed the deficiency and we checked also the toric locus for this uh, system. Remember, it was given. It was given uh, using this paper by Krechun, Dickenstein, Schumann, Sturfer, by this binomial yeah, up to change of variables. So the change of variables was coming from the spanning trees on the graph. And this is a more general rule that the change of variables, k, when you take capital Ki, is the maximum. So these Ki's are the maximal minors of our matrix. AK. So remember the negative of the Laplacian of our graph. So we know pre precisely how to change the variables and so on. 
Okay. By the way, uh, so here we have a historic variety in P2, if you want to look at it like this, given by the equation in capital case. As I, of course, we know now, <laughs> this is a general fact that it's historic. But what is inter even interesting is that here it's a, is the rational normal curve in P2. And you can think of this also when what happens for the n gone on a line, so n points on a line, try to, to see uh, what you can obtain in Pn. Now, uh, let's go to the disguise story clocks. So for the triangle on a line, the disguise story clocks, as I announced, is the whole space of rate constants. R are positive to E, a number of edges. How to prove this? How can we prove this? We saw the key steps. Let's dive into the details. So the first, <clears throat> there are three steps. The first step is uh, to reduce this, so, or in other words, to realize this system generated by our graph G with K using a simpler graph. And uh, actually we will apply this uh, reasoning also for the quadrilateral on the line, namely to have one uh, um, reaction per source vertex. In this way, we get this right-hand side graph. Why uh, precisely this one actually? If we look <clears throat> in the new graph, uh, the the one that goes the, the reaction from one, so yes, from y one towards y three, and same for three towards one. These are uh, we know just by algebraic computation they are pro positively proportional to the vector, respectively minus two two and uh, sorry. Here I think it's one, two. Oh, sorry. No, no, I, I mistake. I made a mistake. So I was planning to look in the left hand side. One, two, and one, three in the left hand side uh, graph. Here they are obviously positively proportional to uh, minus two, two. So uh, then we, we can have. Uh, minus two two times a k one star uh, proportionality factor for uh, their resultant. Similarly, if we look in the other uh, the edges that come from three, three towards two and three towards one, you also have such a situation. So we also so in the right picture we know already how to draw. Uh, what goes out of y1, it's just uh, this one going uh, north west. And what goes out of y3, the resultant is we know precisely is uh, going southeast. But for the second uh, situation where we don't know what is the resultant starting from the second vertex, y, which is y2, and we call it U2, the resultant. So the, 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 the composition of the vertices that come out of it. Well, let's assume it's non-zero, otherwise there's nothing left. And then here again, we have two, two cases. Depending on what K values we have in the left-hand graph, we might have um, from U positive or negative proportionality to this vector minus one one. But uh, if we assume one of the two, we are done because uh, if if it's the other way around, we just we could just interchange the axes x one and x two, and then so the axes are uh, given by these formal variables x one x two, namely because here we have two species and that's how we look at these uh, embedded graphs, right? Two species we are in the plane and we could just uh, permute the variables and get the other one. 
other case. So we just can assume uh, the right hand side graph is dynamically equivalent to uh, the first one. Okay, this is what I was saying. By construction, there's this dynamical equivalence. So once we arrived at this stage, we are we can focus only on the new graph. We could only look at what happens to the cycle, oriented cycle on three vertices, because since it's equivalent to the one we started with, we are uh, we are set once we understand the new graph, the dynamics of the new graph. And uh, remember, we want to prove that for any choice of the rate constants, we have um, disguised toric of the initial one. So let's look what happens with the new one. Is it uh, disguised? What is the disguised toric locus of this cycle? Let us compute the disguised toric locus of G star, this right hand side picture. We will prove it's the whole rate um, constant set, so the whole parameter space, positive one. And uh, since we only look at um, this one with three reactions, we are in R3 positive. So now, second step is our goal. Uh, prove that the disgustory locus of G star is this whole are three positive. How we do this? So now we realize the system G star with K star, but using another graph. And which graph? This is uh, uh, interesting in this example is that we use again the, the same graph, G, the initial one. We could have had a different choice, but we have uh, tried with the complete graph again. Again, now with new, that's the key point, with new rate constants, k hat. So we have g hat, which is actually g, so the, the complete graph from the beginning. This is the left-hand side, but with k hat rates. In order, here is the key point, how to construct these k hat rates, how to parameterize them so that we give, have the same uh, dynamics with G star. So adapt these K stars in these equations number two to get uh, dynamical equivalence. Here, I you can think that there is a bit more to check. Just you can check by hand uh, when you group the vectors and uh, you end up having this because uh, yeah, they, they just uh, will sum up to um, to what you need from K star. Considering that you maybe take um, different different rates, but uh, and maybe different lengths. Okay, okay. but uh, this is not uh, complicated. Once you check, uh, keep in mind is that we take A B C positive because uh, we have here, for instance, for B. And for, uh, sorry, for K to three, for K one, two, they appear here and we need to uh, be careful because the rate constants need to be positive. If you, this, uh, parenthesis, the, if they are zero, the rate, uh, sorry, the reaction just disappears. So in general, let's keep this positive. I mentioned this before. Okay. So we chose k hat in these uh, equations number two, uh, so that the dynamical systems generated by g star and g hat are equal, and we want this uh, equality for any for all a b c positive. Uh, again, since this is the triangle on a line uh, g, this g, but now with rates hat k hat. Use the re the the relation for the toric locus that we saw last time. It was this nice uh, hypersurface. In this, uh, so this time with k hats, just replace. Uh, but we saw uh, we know this equation. So now we, since we're interested in g g hat, 
uh, excuse me, since we're now in this in G star, let's pull back. We need to to see in terms of in, in terms of K star, in terms of K star. So which which K stars verify this equation when you replace K hats with K stars? This leads us to uh, defining this function phi. Actually, now depending on ABC, depending on ABC, because uh, you can think of uh, some kind of uh, existence quantifier elimination for ABC, we, uh, for which uh, K star does does there exist A, B, and C such that uh, this uh, phi of ABC equals zero? We want phi of ABC to be zero, so. That's the, the way we compute. So phi of ABC is this. Now, to, to prove uh, the existence of such a triplet A0, B0, C0, so in other words, to prove that we find such a, such K hats, we can choose them for some precise A, B, C, so that we have this uh, toric equation. Uh, you can try to prove, and uh, the idea we had is to use uh, intermediate value theorem. Because we notice that uh, making B or C go towards infinity or towards, uh, yes, usually uh, to infinity or to zero, that's uh, the possibilities here. You can uh, check in this uh, expression that uh, you either get phi of ABC in that in one setting to be negative, whereas in the other uh, it is uh, positive, takes positive values. We don't give precise, of course, uh, ABC for this. We just say there exists such a triplet A1, B1, C1 such that phi of a1, b1, c1 is positive, and a, a triplet uh, where called a2, b2, c2, such that phi, when you replace them in phi, you get negative value. And since we are in the real setting here, we apply intermediate value theorem, phi is continuous, we are uh, ready to, uh, we can conclude that there is a triplet of positive real numbers a0, b0, c0, that will make phi vanish there. So note that we don't, so we don't give a precise complex balance realization since we just find uh, the existence of such a reparameterization, right? In, in terms of K hat using K star, we know there exists such a parameterization that will give that will verify the toric locus for the new reaction with hats. In other words, we just showed as a general procedure uh, to determine the disguised toric locus uh, when we don't give explicit realization, but we prove the existence of such. So this is to keep in mind. Sometimes, maybe when you need to extend the toric locus to a disguised toric locus, you uh, use this procedure in other contexts. I think with uh, this, I really clarified all the details for the triangle and line, and we can think of what happens for the quadrilateral. So keep try to we, we started doing systematically this so that we got uh, towards so the plan was to get to the end on a line. Things get quite complicated. So what about the quadrilateral on a line? So for the quadrilateral on a line, what we call quadrilateral on a line is a, a complete directed graph on four vertices. What do we do here? Uh, in this context, we managed again to completely determine the dynamics of the systems that are generated by this graph. So we can we know absolutely everything about uh, these systems in terms of their uh, rate constants. So I will emphasize now the fact that if before was uh, 
if for the triangle we didn't give precise conditions in in the case of the quadrilateral we really find uh, some semi algebraic conditions that we are we have effectively so uh, how to do this uh, i also wrote here in blue to keep these procedures that can be repeated or that could be applied some somewhere else because the key idea we used, not only here, but also in some other class for the end gone on a line, is that uh, we try to realize the system generated by, by our graph uh, using another graph where the detailed balance condition can be established. What is a detailed balance? So for the detailed balance, we need reversible reaction network. So we try to have pairs of reversible reactions uh, in the graph G hat. For that one, we can infer then when is this guy's, sorry, when is detailed balance? You remember it is a, a, it's a different type of condition, not the Kirchhoff condition for the vertices, but it's a balancing for pairs of edge of reactions, opposite reactions in the, in the uh, reversible graph. So uh, this is just a procedure. I will show you soon what precisely we do. So find a graph where you can impose the detailed balance condition and check it. Then uh, you can pull back to your, so this gives a parameterization of your new, new parameters of k hats, pull back that to your initial case and see what uh, conditions you you have. Maybe you don't discover the complete disguised story glocus doing this, but at least you find some uh, part of it. Okay. What happens concretely? Um, again, since we use this systematic procedure, we reduce uh, the graph G, the complete directed graph on four vertices to one reaction per vertex in the network here in this picture. There's just one instance of such a thing because the red arrows, as we will see soon, can have different uh, directions. So how do, you, how do we do this? Again, we gr group all the uh, reactions that start at certain, at any of these four, like at uh, each of these four vertices. So um, for the first three reactions, because we had Starting, for instance, from y, y1, you go to y2, you go to y3, and you go to y4. So you have 1, 2, respectively, 1, 3, and 1, 4. That appear here, 1, 2, 1, 3, 1, 4. Since you multiply by the same vector, minus 1, 1, uh, just to think of this in terms of uh, a vector with its scalar multiplication, you need to adjust uh, here the case. So. It's exactly just uh, vector calculus here. Uh, same for each of the vertices. Do this, do the same thing. Note that for the last one, for the fourth vertex, is the opposite. You take one minus one as a vertex. And uh, notice, please, that the first and the last one only have positive coefficients. We say that. We call them y1, uh, sorry, u1 and u4. Uh, we say that u1 and u4 are positively proportional to their corresponding uh, vectors. And uh, we can uh, take the notation for this proportionality factor, k1 star, k4 star, coming from these parentheses. But what happens for the other two is... Uh, I announced a uh, bit uh, just showed last time. Those two, the red ones here, uh, of course, their direction depends on the values of the k we start with in the big graph. So there are two cases, of course, for their signs in each of the vertices, y2 and y3. This gives us four possible um, situations in which uh, we can decompose the parameter space of all the k uh, values, k values coming from the 
uh, complete directed graph. So here we have one, two, three, four, five, six, twelve um, values for k. Decompose this r positive to the twelfth positive order into four so-called chambers. This is the terminology from reaction from uh, real algebraic geometry. You consider chambers given by these inequalities. Of course, uh, you can uh, sketch the behavior, as I mentioned, in these four graphs. In terms of the red, the, the only thing that differs is the red arrows here for y2 and y3 in each of the cases. So we can have, we can notice that in all the three, first three chambers, there is precisely one single time when you change the orientation of your vertices. Not, so maybe, sorry, I was saying direction, but uh, orientation, uh, I was meaning before. So here it goes, uh, uh, northwest, northwest to northwest, and here it goes to southeast. Same here, it goes northwest, and up here it goes to southeast, and southeast, southeast. Northwest, northwest, we change again once, southeast, southeast, only once. What happens in the last graph is special, and this will really have uh, important, it will be important for the um, uh, characterization of the dynamics of this uh, quadrilateral on, on a line, because here we have uh, we changed this uh, uh, three times the orientation. So that's why we have this definition because we sometimes repeat this uh, terminology. Single sign change chambers are the first three of them, and as the name already explains. And the last uh, chamber, we just call it the fourth chamber. <laughs> we just, uh, that's how we will refer to it. And that's the special one. And now comes the, the complete characterization of the dynamics of our quadrilateral on an eye. Consider this, so we have this theorem, right? Together with Bruce Tenga and Krachun from 2022. So if we consider four vortices with one reaction per source as before, so the new graph, take a vector of rate constants k for the for the initial complete graph, uh, quadrilateral on the right. Consider k star, these four um, reaction rates for the one reaction per source uh, graphs. So now we can characterize the dynamical system generated by G, by the quadrilateral initially, with its K vector in R positive to the 12. So this system is disguised toric if and only if there are, we have the following two cases. Either the uh, vector of rate constant K belongs to the uh, single sign change chambers, one of them, or the second condition is a bit uh, different. The vector k belongs to the fourth chamber, so in terms of those uh, inequalities, uh, yeah, linear inequalities on k. And so this end is for the second condition. Uh, you have this. Uh, Nonlinear inequality in k stars. These four k stars, well, actually, you just replace uh, that. I just wrote it shortly, but essentially, replace them from in terms of k, and you get uh, this uh, condition on your k vector expressed con condensed in a k star. So for now, uh, this slide, just let's look at this nonlinear condition. If uh, we want to represent things in uh, three dimensions, we can fix one K to be one, uh, let's say uh, K fourth style, so that we get uh, an affine picture. And uh, the picture is this beige surface. For now, ignore the gray surface. The beige surface here is 
uh, actually the Segrev variety, if you think uh, about it, well, in the affine space and uh, actually uh, in the positive order. So it turns out that uh, Segrev variety appears uh, here in the description of the disguised toric locus for the quadrilateral on a line in the fourth chamber, because the other three chambers, there's no problem. They um, they were giving, without any other condition, these guys to locus. But for the last one, we also have this condition. And actually, it's not just the equality, but as you see, we have an inequality. And uh, you can check by computation that all the points above this surface here, that lie above and on the bash surface, in the positive order and give rise to this guy's historic system. So here is the real algebraic geometry that uh, appears in application that you have to keep in mind, but uh, with the tools from complex algebraic geometry where you find this, um, or uh, different, so yes, you can uh, make approximations in uh, using Segre variety, but we really care about the real side. And uh, I mentioned that this uh, beige surface, uh, the secret variety, appears in Anshu's thesis, PhD thesis. Uh, she did her PhD thesis uh, under the supervision of Bernd Sturzer, at the, if I am not mistaken, at the uh, um, University of California in Berkeley. So you can find the thesis uh, online and read some more about it. And that's the improvement for the result. Because uh, we extended this to a positive Lebesgue like measure set, all the points above. So essentially, we know that all the parameters that lie above give rise to uh, nice dynamics that I explained from last lectures about Horn and Jackson theorem. And so. Let's see some ideas of the proof. Time, time flies. Uh, okay. So some ideas of the proof, not not the whole proof. Um, there are several steps. Again, uh, for the first three chambers, we don't talk about the first three chambers because we will get there when we talk about the end gone on a line, the generalized case. Okay. But if you fix uh, your rate constant vector in the fourth chamber, let's see what happens and how to prove the, those uh, those that 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 uh, condition. Uh, good. So the system generated by the quadrilateral on a line with the initial rate constant k is equivalent, is the same as the system generated by G star uh, that appears in the fourth chamber. It's, uh, I, I remind, I recall this, this one, the last uh, in the right bottom corner. So these are the equivalent. Good. That's why we now focus only on the uh, last right bottom corner picture, G star with its K star. Let's just focus on that. Again, we re reduce the problem to a simpler graph. As before, we are. this is not enough. We need a bit more, com so we simplified the graph, but still uh, it's a bit too simple to get some insight. We need to add some more reactions and that's what also happened for the triangle on a line. In this case, why, what we do? We extend a bit this uh, one reaction per vertex graph with the minimal graph that could lead us to impose the detailed balance condition. A detailed balance, balance it requires uh, the graph to be reversible, as I mentioned. So we need to have these pairs of reversible this uh, reversible pairs of reactions. This is uh, 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 the graph G hat. So you see, we always try to see, uh, start with G, get to G star, and then again, try to get a G hat and all the time preserving the dynamical, uh, uh, or trying to, to, to get, uh, to see where, to, to check the dynamical equivalence. Maybe not for all of the case, but uh, to see where they are dynamically equivalent. Okay, so we have this new graph now, G hat with uh, these pairs. Um, again, we need to adjust the rate constant. This is the systematic procedure that appears and it depends how you want to, to... You can pick here any 
uh, parameterization, new parameterization that you want since A, B, and C are free and they're real positive numbers, you could um, pick uh, some other expressions such that you get uh, the desired uh, network coming from the ones you have. So what do we do uh, here? There are two steps that we need to, to, to proceed with in order to finish our proof for the fourth chamber. So let's recall what uh, we said. We want to, to prove for the fourth chamber that the dynamical system in the fourth chamber is this guy's story, if and only if we have this inequality uh, here, this Segre inequality, we can call it, if you want. So now, there are two, uh, because it's a if and only, obviously, uh, there are two steps. First, uh, we, we will show that the, this is left as an exercise. I don't know if there is time at the end, but otherwise you can read it in the paper. Uh, for every K star that satisfies this Segre inequality, there exist A and B real numbers that are positive, such that the new graph G hat together with K hat satisfies the detailed balance condition. So this is one direction. Why? Uh, well, uh, I did maybe I didn't uh, emphasize this enough. Detailed balance condition implies complex balance condition. So um, with this, we are set. Once we satisfy detail balance, so we are happy for our case of complex. And now, what about the other uh, side of the implication? Uh, start, so, so suppose the, the system generated by G star, K star, so this one in this picture. Uh, no, excuse me. No, no, G star is the one with one reaction per source. So. Suppose that that one is uh, this guy's story. And then we show, of course, uh, I didn't add much information here, that the condition is necessarily satisfied. Mm, this is more involved. It, uh, it required a bit of uh, of details that uh, took, were, would have taken me too much time. And I couldn't add them here. So this is just uh, what we did. So with this, the proof is done, the ideas of the proof, and we completely characterize the dynamics of the of the graph of the quadrilateral on a line. Now, remember there was a question in the beginning of my talks. Uh, since we extended the toric locus to the disguised toric locus, the question is whether any so yes, whether any system that has a unique equilibrium point is also a disguised Toric system. And uh, in the next uh, slides, a bit of, uh, of the talk, we will focus on this, uh, of ans on, in answering this question. Actually, we will look at the difference between uniqueness of equilibria and being this guy's toric. Here is a picture. Uh, well, uh, I told you. Here I, I need to mention, just in case uh, someone sees the, this picture and says it's maybe wrong, it's not. Toric, uh, so there is the global attractor conjecture, okay? Uh, in toric dynamical systems, they are proven to be locally stable. And in some cases, uh, it has been proven that also globally stable. That's why this picture is for the, we are working in such of, in this context for the quadrilateral on a line, just uh, in that, uh, assumption where it has been proven, um, where the global stability has been proven. Now, uh, or where we have global stability. What we will do in order to prove that the inclusion between these guys historic and globally stable is a strict inclusion, well, we will provide now, we're ready to see, uh, systems that are globally stable, but that are uh, not disguised toric. Remember, when we talk about this uh, local stability, we think 
only uh, in a fixed stoichiometric compatibility class. So for each uh, stoichiometric compatibility class, okay, so in other words, up to conservation laws. Uh, in order to do to provide such examples of uh, systems globally stable but not risk guide story, we need the following proposition. So what does it say? So we consider an E graph G star again the one with one reaction per source in the fourth chamber. Mm -hmm. The dynamical system that is generated by G star and K star has precisely one equilibrium point in each stoichiometric compatibility class, if and only if we have this inequality in terms of the 4K um, star parameters of the system. So we have a if and only if condition for having exactly one equilibrium point in each stoichiometric compatibility class. For the four, we are all only thinking about the fourth chamber now. So. We are working there. Okay. Let's understand this. So you see the, this uh, equation. I will uh, now think of it in terms first in terms of an equality. Uh, so let's draw the zero locus of that one. It's well once you you look in the affine space. So just pick for instance k four star to be one then you get a three-dimensional picture. And it is this singular surface here in gray. I have two pictures just to see from different angles. So two perspectives of the zero locus of this discriminant. Uh, that's why in the first lecture, I wanted to talk a bit more about the discriminant. Uh, I mean, just to define it, to, to see how it relates to the result and to the multiple zeros and so on. Okay, but it's quite, a, of course, a well-known uh, tool in algebraic geometry. So now, if you have this gray surface, what we proved, so what, what we'll see in the next slide is that actually all the points above the gray surface have a unique equilibrium point. So this gray surface is the discriminant uh, separates in the positive order of the parameters of your network um, um, net, uh, systems with one equilibrium point um, versus systems where multi-stationarity arises. And uh, I insist with multi-stationarity because I know it appears also in uh, uh, some other lectures and also because um, I want to mention, maybe it's worth uh, saying, I think I have here... Uh, I have here, I added a, a remark that being multi-stationary is very important if you think of biochemical reaction networks, because this means uh, there are distinct responses of the cells in function of the initial condition. So you can think of certain diseases or problems that might appear in uh, biology, in medicine, where start, depends where you start, you might end up in um, some problematic situation because of this, or in, it, it has a meaning. Okay, so all the points that lie above the gray surface give rise to unique equilibrium dynamical systems, and all the points, okay, we are, we are, we are clear. How to prove now <clears throat> some of these, um, some of these things? Uh, first, Keep in mind, we all uh, we think again uh, only about G star, the one with one reaction per source. Use mass action kinetics um, theory and obtain uh, the dynamic the ODE system of such as of this uh, network. And here it is in number eight. Well, uh, actually eight and nine, and it turns out that uh, here we can see some. Uh, um, compatibility class, so some, some uh, how I call them here, conservation laws, some conservation laws in action, because dx2 over dt is just the opposite of dx1 over dt. This means that the sum of the two concentrations of the two species, x1 plus x2, is constant in a fixed stoichiometric compatibility class. And in this picture, 
I wanted to show the stoichiometric compatibility classes. Since we are in the plane, uh, in the two-dimensional phase uh, plane, this is, uh, you see, we have to keep in mind, here, this is the phase plane. It's different than uh, when we draw the reaction networks. Uh, those were just formal variables, x1, x2. Here is really the phase plane, a sketch of it. And uh, you see that uh, there are two cases, either the discriminant is uh, negative or is positive. In this picture, we just drew these two cases. And uh, there is a unique equilibrium, as I said here. We didn't prove yet that this is globally attracting in the case where it is unique. But uh, the advantage we had for doing this uh, example was precisely that we work in the in the plane, that the stoichiometric compatibility classes were one-dimensional. And then if it is um, one unique equilibrium, you add a bit of computation just to show that the arrows point uh, inside the each stoichiometric compatibility class towards it. And then in this setting, unique equilibrium uh, means globally attracting in, in this setting. But that was nice for us. We were happy to uh, have this and we could um, then say that, look, these are examples of unique equilibrium that uh, systems that um, are not this guy's story. So now just uh, a slide with a bit more details. Uh, maybe I hope you don't get <laughs> too tired of it uh, from this. But I thought it's interesting since I was saying in the beginning that the CART rule of science, which is a tool in real algebraic geometry, comes into play in this uh, work. And indeed, uh, we needed such, uh, such a thing in order to conclude what we were saying about uh, multistationarity and uh, to, to get to that discriminant and so on. This is what I was saying, I was saying before. Maybe ah, one more thing, uh, yes. How to show that, uh, you just show that uh, the segre inequality implies the discriminant being negative inequality. So that means that, uh, as I was saying, the points uh, above the beige are uh, include are uh, are globally um, have a global equilibrium. Good. Now we are done with understanding the quadrilateral. We can go next to the generalized setting of n-gon of the n-gon on the line. Um, so as you saw, I wanted to give the details for the quadrilateral because there is uh, quite a lot of uh, the proof is not so trivial, and uh, I thought it's worth it to to be seen for the n gone on a line. Uh, we have sufficient conditions for the system to be this guy story. So the 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 angle on the line is not completely characterized. This is still, uh, I could say, yes, open, because uh, it it was uh, quite uh, we didn't have the time yet to to do it. So for the end, what is an angle on the line? Just take these uh, vertices such that the sum of their coordinates, of course, are on the line are, are the constant. Um, as before, do the whole uh, reasoning with the um, with one reaction per source, then go to the detail balance network, so the network where you could impose detail balance, a reversible one. Again, you get single sign change chambers. So again, you get single sign. Uh, you can think of just the chambers where you have one change of the orientation of, of your vectors when you have one reaction per source, and in those, in all of those single sign chain chambers, we proved that the system generated by G and K is this guy historic. So for all the parameters K belonging to single sign chain chambers in the parameter space, 
uh, we know it is this guy the system is this guy's story. From here, maybe I was saying as before, we realize the dynamical system where we can impose with G hat, where we can impose detail balance condition. Remember the detail balance implies complex balance. Thus, um, so detail balance systems are complex balance. And then once you have the conditions for detail balance, you pull back from G hat to G. And you get semi-algebraic conditions for uh, this guy historic for your initial set. Uh, sorry, for your initial uh, graph G. This was what we have for uh, single sign change chambers. Uh, I would be very interested to see some complete characterizations for uh, for this n gone on a line, uh, this guy's story blocks. Also, these single sign change chambers are also proving what we were saying for the quadrilateral. Of course, the three chambers are uh, exactly this um, scenario. So uh, that's why I left the proof for this. So now in the last um, few minutes, I kept measuring this uh, weird case where the toric locus is empty, but the um, this guy's toric locus is a positive uh, Lebesgue measure set, and that's what happens for this network in orange. And for other uh, generalization of it, where we will see soon, we allow the arrows to move and the dimensions of the rectangle to be variable. So in uh, 2020, Krachun, Jin, and Yu found with some different uh, proof, with some other tools, the fact that, so expressed in the in our language now, they were using maybe slightly different context, they proved that the dynamical system generated by this orange E graph is dynamically equivalent to complex balance, so is this guy's historic, if and only if uh, the four rate constants satisfy these inequalities. Um, for now, just think of this orange graph. You see, this is not weakly reversible. One doesn't have any chance of uh, having a toric locus because for the orange graph, uh, it's the complex balancing conditions are uh, are not possible. What we did next was to generalize this to um, the rectangle where you can have <clears throat> Lengths um, A, lengths B, so the length and the, so these two dimensions, A, capital A and capital, no, sorry, maybe the notations are, no, the, the, sorry, the dimensions of the rectangle here, we denoted them by alpha, respectively beta. This refl is reflected in the coordinates of your vertices. And then using some coefficients, capital A, capital B, we also could control what, uh, so where the um, other four vertices that are some target vertices are placed, y5, y6, y7, and y8. y8. And once we have these notations, <clears throat> we are ready to see the generalization of this, this guy's toric locus for the network here in orange having these parameters, four parameters, k1, k2, k3, k4 positive. So k hat of g is the following, is a set of k's that verify these two inequalities. Again, we see it's a positive Lebesgue measure set and given uh, with inequalities, <clears throat> if you consider what we had um, previously, so previously alpha was, Yes, alpha was three, beta was <coughs> two. So then the denominator here, see, uh, three plus two, it's five, three minus two, one. So we, we recover the left-hand side and similarly 
for the sorry, for the right hand side here, 25, 3 plus 2 over 3 minus 2 squared. This generalizes the result by Krechun, Jin, and U for this kind of network. Just uh, one single phrase or just one slide for the idea of the proof. How to prove this? So, or you know, maybe you um, maybe you ask uh, if if we are sure. So, um, I, yes, I didn't say how we prove it. We use this blue blue reaction network that is the complete graph on the source vertices. But you might wonder why we don't use the target vertices. And there's a theorem. This is due to the fact that there's a theorem, like Rechun, Jin, and U, saying that it is enough when studying dynamical equivalence to complex balance to just look at the source vertices. This simplifies quite a lot the, the problems you sometimes see. And if I have, let me see what's the time. Oh, maybe just uh, if I have one more minute. Um, one second. The, the algorithm uh, idea that uh, systematizes what we were see seeing all, 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 uh, all along the, the tutorial, to do when you want to find the disgustory locus, well, start from your graph, you find the uh, new graph G hat that is weakly reversible, necessary, it's a necessary condition. Choose K hats such that they are satisfying those nice relations uh, here in terms of some cones, uh, I don't go into details. And uh, finally, with these new K hats, impose the complex balance condition, so the toric locus of this G hat. Pull back then to the initial case using the parameterization of k hat. Use quantifier elimination for for instance, and uh, eliminate the parameters that you introduced, the real parameters appearing in k hats, so that you get to your vector k in the disguised story locus of G. And you can check in the paper we have. Uh, an explicit uh, application of the algorithm for this uh, three by two uh, rectangle network. So I would like to thank you very much for the attention and for the opportunity to uh, give these lectures. And, um, I, I was honored to, to talk uh, to the SIMPA research school here in, at LUMS online, but uh, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, Miruna. Thank you very much. Uh, 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 we will share uh, the slides, but uh, readily if there are any questions from the audience side or anyone would like to comment, so please welcome. Anyone would like to share any comments or lectures on these lectures? Anyways, Maruna, uh, I think uh, this is this is a wonderful uh, time to say goodbye. And uh, by the way, I, it was very uh, extensive and uh, you have your lecture were very extensive and uh, definitely uh, there were too many uh, new keywords for the audience and uh, we are trying, uh, I, I hope that uh, at some time, uh, one of the participants or maybe many participants would take the benefits uh, and definitely there are some intersection with the all of the contents with some other uh, speakers. So I think uh, I hope that uh, some uh, good thing will start from this particular SIMPA score. And we will please feel free to contact me at any time, and uh, I'm happy to to keep talking about this. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now it's time for uh, tea and coffee break. And uh, bye bye, Mirona. And take care. Will you join the next session Bye. or not? I think you already shared the open problems today and uh, that day as well. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I shared Bye -bye. them last time. Yes, during the research uh, question session. Okay. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Essentially, very much. keep keep working with these uh, networks and find more of these guys' story uh, locus loci. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. The key okay. point. Okay. okay, thank you. Okay. Goodbye. Thank you. Bye.